Well, greetings and salutations, test takers. This is Dean Tenney, a.k.a. the Series 7 Guru, coming to you from my studio here in fabulous Las Vegas with another explication request. The best free supplement to your paid study materials is my YouTube channel, but if you don't have a Kaplan QBank, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement. I will help you with any question from any vendor, just easier if it's Kaplan. Uh, as a paid supplement with my 15% discount code at checkout, Guru15, it, it can be yours for $55.80 as I'm making this video. For that commercial, Kaplan allows me to give you a free look on Kaplan content like this. And here is the QID request. It's QID1409630. A 50,000 20 year 7% municipal bond with semi-annual M&S, that means March and September is when it pays, is issued on March 1st. You know, it takes a while for us to sell bonds, so, you know, the syndicate's going to be open for a while. Anyways, it says, uh, the full price for a trade of this bond with a 7% yield of maturity to settle on June 30th is closest to. So uh, what we're going to need to know here is the number of days of accrued interest. Uh, I'm a big fan of what I call the shortcut. So what I'm going to do is take June 30th, and June is the sixth month of the calendar. I'm going to take 30th, that's the, you know, settlement. And what I'm going to do if I'm using the shortcut is subtract from that the, uh, the interest payment date, the last interest payment date. Now, this is a new bond, but it wouldn't matter in terms of this, right? So I say, okay, well, the accrued interest is going to be paid by the buyer to the seller for the number, the time frame, right? So when I sell this to the bond to you, I say, well, listen, these were my bonds, in this case, syndicate, but they were my bonds for March. Uh, they were my bonds for uh, uh, what is it, April. They were my bonds for May. And they were my bonds for most of June. And you say, well, do you want to get the check on September 1st? I'll send you your pro rata share. I said, no, 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 no. You know, this is uh, not a relationship. This is a transaction. Why don't we right now just figure out what you, the buyer, owe the seller in terms of accrued interest, and then you can uh, just keep the check. And you say, well, I don't want to do it that way. I said, well, too bad. The Uniform Practice Code, which standardizes practices in the securities industry, says buyers pay sellers the dollar amount of the accrued interest. So I subtract that using the shortcut. What that is, again, is the interest payment date of March 1st. March is the third month in the calendar. And first, right? And if I subtract that, this is called the shortcut. I end up with, uh, this part I can't help you with, three from six. So that's three months and 29 days. And so I've got the first step here. I got 119 days. So I need to know how many days of accrued interest. By the way, that's the more likely test question, by the way, is just to say, how many days of accrued interest does the buyer owe the seller? You know, the idea here is the seller, in this case, it's the, it looks like it's the syndicate from the context of the question, but, you know, the buyer owes for March, uh, April, May, and part of June. So the next step of the question is to figure out, okay, well, what are we going to have to write a check for here, basically, right? So uh, we're going to pay uh, for the bonds, but we also got to pay the accrued interest as a buyer, right? So there's uh, each bond here pays 7%, 7% based on par is $70 annually. Right. And we have 50 bonds, right? $50,000 is 50 bonds. So we have 50 bonds paying $70 in annual interest. That means there's $3,500 in annual interest. And we're going to divide that by 360. In a uniform practice code, every month has 30 days. And what I'm trying to figure out here is what is the interest per day? Because you know, as a buyer, I owe the seller the interest per day times 119, right? Because the seller was an owner for 119 days of the 180-day period. Remember, I'm doing 360, but math, I always, always do it. You could do, if you want, I think it's a little more complicated, but you could take 1750 by 180, whatever. But we need, what we need or are solving for here is the interest per day. So I figure out that these bonds, if I have 50 bonds that pay 7% in interest per day, that's $9.72. Now, again, depending on your rounding, won't change the answer to the question because you can see here it says closest to, you know, so 972, two, you know, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not rounding as the board, I'm rounding up or down, but 
you know, on the test, you're just going to pick whatever approximates your LED display. Rounding will not be a problem. Okay, so we have $9.72 uh, interest per day times 119 days. So that's going to be $1,156.68 that the buyer owes the seller in terms of accrued interest. So remember, that's not the answer to the question because it says the full price. So the full price would include not only the calculation of the accrued interest, but also the price for the bonds, right? So these are $50,000 of bonds. It says issued, bonds are issued at par. So I owe $50,000 for the uh, bonds. I owe as a buyer $1,156.68 in accrued interest. So the answer to the question is $51,156.68. Or again, depending on your rounder rounding, we might be off, you know, whatever. As I said here, what you do is you just pick whatever approximates your LED display. There won't be anything that's going to be, you know, uh, within a cent or two based on your rounding. So, okay, that's how I would have attacked the question. Remember, there's all kinds of different ways to attack math questions. So, you know, uh, this is the way I think is the simplest way to do it. But again, it's a buffet. Uh, take what you like, uh, leave what you don't. And remember, inch by inch, your Series 7 is a cinch. Yard by yard, your Series 7 is hard. I'll see you for the next explication request.